I don't know how many of you are participating in the spiritual read in Kalalam County. We estimate that about 200 people in our area are reading the Book of Joy right now. Douglas uh, Abrams describes an encounter between His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and His Excellency, Archbishop Tutu, which happened in 2015. The question these holy leaders are discussing is, how can we find joy in life's unavoidable sufferings? The readings I chose for today, Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day, are my biblical comment to the wise answers I found in that book. The first reading is the most cited part of the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything, a time for life and death, for joy and sorrow, for sickness and healing. As we remind ourselves on this very special day, the first day of the season of Lent, death and suffering are a natural part of our existence. They cannot be avoided. Life needs to be accepted in all its pain, imperfection, and beauty. Why be unhappy about something which cannot be changed? As we can read in the Book of Joy over and over, a big chunk of why we suffer is because of the expectations we have of life. If you are determined to be a millionaire at age 30, and then your 30th birthday come a, comes along and you don't have more than $100 to your name, well, yeah, you will be unhappy. You will be desperate. You will feel like the world's worst failure. But your crisis will be entirely self-made. But what about all those people who suffer unjustly because of disability or sickness or discrimination? His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, as well as His Excellency, Archbishop Tutu, suffered for many decades under oppressive governments. These two religious leaders say that their suffering has made them even stronger. The time in exile, the times under arrest, have made them stronger. Whatever traumatic situation happened to them, they used it to develop joy and an attitude of loving kindness to all around them even those who kept them in prison or in exile. And that brings me to our second reading, the famous passage about the centrality of love, which we find in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. It says, if I have everything but do not have love, I gain nothing. No talent, no knowledge, no worldly success means anything. All is vanity if love is not at the center of it. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. This leads me to another important lesson we can find in the Book of Joy. Too much self-centered thinking is another source of suffering. Whatever you put your attention to will grow. If you put your own disappointment or frustration or anger in the center of your attention, your disappointment or frustration or anger will grow. If you put loving kindness at the center of your attention, your loving kindness will grow. His Holiness and His Excellency are convinced that the greatest joy we experience comes from helping others. And the foundation for helping others is a healthy and joyful relationship to yourself. We have learned that much of our suffering comes, firstly, from our own expectations of life, and secondly, from our tendency to focus too much on ourself and our negative feelings. If we accept whatever life throws on us, and deal with it honestly. And if we focus on our love for God, for our neighbor, and for ourselves, 
we will surely have a more joyful life. And the good news is, we have all the time and freedom we need to do so because as Christian believers, we know that we do not have to work for nor worry about our salvation. In Christ, we are saved. And God's grace comes as a free gift to us. But even if we can be sure of that, don't we still spend too much time in worry and fear? Look at our gospel reading. The two followers of Jesus who are on the way to Emmaus are devastated. As they see it, Jesus' death brings everything they lived for to an end. All their hope for the kingdom of God to come true on earth is gone. The purpose of their life is in question. What to do now? They have no idea. And all that time, while they are walking and talking, Jesus is at their side. <laughs> They're not aware. They do not know it. But Jesus is there nevertheless. Jesus even partakes in their conversation, but they do not recognize him. Jesus reveals all his scriptural wisdom to them, but still they do not understand. And when does that change? When Jesus breaks bread with them. In the fellowship of a shared meal, after they invited him to stay with them, they recognize Jesus. And they understand that death did not have the last word, and their hope is reignited. This story illustrates my message in beautiful ways. While centered in on themselves and their feelings of despair, the men on their way to Emmaus do not find a way out. They are even unable to see the help and comfort in Jesus who is at their side all along. But when they invite that supposed stranger to share a meal with them, everything changes. They see Jesus in the stranger. They understand the mystery of the resurrection. Their confidence and strength is back, and immediately they share the good news with others. It is in giving that they receive, in loving that they feel loved. So yes, what lives will die, and life comes with joys as well as sorrows, Today, on Ash Wednesday, we face these truths honestly and without fear. Because we belong to Jesus, there is no need to be afraid. Just as the travelers to Emmaus, we rejoice, even in suffering. Because we know that Jesus' love endures forever. Remember these words of St. Paul. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.